Welcome to Can It Be a Mead? In this series, we are answering the question, Can It Be a Mead? We have two different wheels, which have different ingredients on them. We spin them both, and we decide, or we let the wheel decide, what mead we're going to make, and then we make it. So, let's start with our first wheel. This is the wheel of fruits, or a no fruit option. So, we are going to end up with, uh, let's see. We are going to be using a watermelon, which... Um, I've used watermelon before in the past, and I have some experience, but I don't know. Depends on the second ingredient. Let's go to the second wheel. Okay, here's the second wheel. This was this is where it gets really dicey. We have lots of crazy flavors: habanero pepper, jalapeno, nutmeg, white chocolate, watermelon, and oh. Okay, this is um, this is only episode two. I just landed on the choose two option, which means that we have to spin the wheel twice. I'm going to go ahead and remove that so we don't do get it again. But here we go. Let's see. we got to spin this twice now. So we have watermelon and we have, oh, what? Cinnamon, watermelon, cinnamon stick. Oh no, and I'm gonna remove it again. Okay, and watermelon cinnamon stick. Oh goodness. And a jalapeno? Oh. Y'all, watermelon cinnamon stick jalapeno. What? Okay, let's go buy some ingredients. And let's see if we can figure out what to do in this situation. I have uh, done a little shopping now. I have everything I need here. I have my buckets for fermenting, um, got star sin water, but more importantly, the ingredients we're using. I am going to be using this water here. This is uh, spring water that I bought, it's a gallon. Then I have my cinnamon sticks. I also have jalapenos in here. We'll talk about these in a moment as well. And um, if you've ever, tried to ferment with watermelons, you know that it is very, very hard to do that. And that's namely because a watermelon is such a weird fruit, it has some problems of its own. So we're gonna be using this uh, Amaretti flavoring that's watermelon flavoring. So I'm sorry if you're you know, upset that I'm using watermelon flavoring, but it's really hard to get a good watermelon flavor in. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I've got my honey, everything. Here's my recipe um, right here, I'm gonna be using one gallon of water, 2.5 pounds of orange blossom honey, um, uh, the cinnamon sticks and cinnamon stick or whatever, and the jalapenos will be in the secondary, but I got I don't know my exact number for those yet. And I don't know my exact ounce for the watermelon flavoring. You'll know that right here because I'll have edited it and fixed it. So let's go ahead and first uh, re rehydrate our yeast so they're ready to go. And then we'll start mixing in our ingredients. Rehydrating the yeast is really simple. We're gonna put a little bit of our spring water into here. Now this is room temp, you can heat it up if you want. Um, normally I just rehydrate my stuff at room temp. We're using the Lavin EC1118. It's a great mead yeast in general, but I think it'll be a good one for this because uh, it will chew through, I'll say this, it keeps flavors pretty well. Even though it's a strong yeast, uh, it preserves honey character well, it preser preserves other characters well too. Anyways, um, this is gonna go ahead and get started mixing in. Let's let that get going. That'll rehydrate as we're going along. Now let's go ahead and mix in the rest of our ingredients. All right, here's our must. This is honey and water the start of every mead. Now we are going to um, add the watermelon flavoring in. The way I'm gonna do this is by taste. Generally these eight ounce bottles from Amoretti are meant to flavor um, about five gallons of mead. So I can do some math that way. However, every one of them is different. In my experience, the watermelon flavoring actually requires more. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually measure out, of course, how much I use and tell you. Here is a taster of what I've done. I have two ounces in 
Um, yeah. It's obviously very sweet because it's honey water right now, just sugar water essentially. Um, the thing I'm list listening, I'm tasting for is the uh, watermelon flavor to pop through. And I really want that to be the most prevalent thing Aside, of course, with honey too, um, because in the primary fermentation, there's a lot of vigorous fermentation that occurs, which means that there's a high chance that the uh, watermelon flavor will dissipate some as it goes out the airlock. So I'd rather have more watermelon flavoring than not enough. Let me quickly explain to you why I'm using this again. Some of you want me to use real watermelon. The problem with real watermelon is um, the fruit is very susceptible to bacteria, so if you try to ferment with it, you have to do it in specific temperatures, you have to do it in the right, basically the perfect zone and timing. Otherwise, your the, the fruit itself will develop a bacteria, and it's just kind of how it works. So that's a hard thing. Number two, it is a fruit that is basically sugar water. It's made of that. So I would have to use a ton of watermelon to flavor one gallon of mead, and I don't necessarily want to deal with that. So that's kind of the two main issues surrounding it. And so I'd rather do something easy like this. Now let's take a gravity reading, which I've already got my stuff out here. Let's find out what the gravity is for this mead. Okay, I could not have planned this better. This is at 1.080 or 1080, which means that we're setting at a 10 and about 10.4% ABV mead which is perfect. That's exactly the range that I want this in. I'm very excited for that. I, um, that worked out really well. So dump that back in. Now let's talk about our other two ingredients while our yeast finish up. The uh, jalapeno and the cinnamon sticks are spice-esque things. Normally when you make a mead, you can put those things into the primary. Um, however, I'm not going to because they're both strong flavors and I want to be able to control how much of the flavor is imparted. This thing might take two weeks to ferment. If it did that, and I had the jalapeno and the uh, cinnamon stick on there, a two weeks of those two ingredients on this mead might be too much. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this ferment. And I believe at this point that this is, yeah, these yeast are good. We're gonna go ahead and dump our yeast in, let them get started. They've rehydrated, so they're doing good. Now we are gonna put in some yeast nutrient energizer to help this fermentation along. So let me do that real fast. All right, we have our yeast energizer, nutrients, our yeast in there. This thing's ready to go, go through the primary fermentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my lid on. Um, I oxygen or added oxygen by stirring with my drill earlier so this thing will ferment well. So uh, I'm a little nervous about this one to be honest. Watermelon and cinnamon are two flavors that I can see going together. Watermelon and jalapeno, two flavors I can see going together. <laughs> All three of these as one, it's gonna be really interesting. So I hope you're excited to see what's gonna happen with this. I am gonna go ahead, I'll probably um, chop these up and then freeze these jalapenos. We're probably only gonna use one in the end, but uh, just so they don't, they don't go bad. And we're gonna see after the primary one, if this is watermelon-y enough, if not, then we'll add more flavor. Anyways, let's find out if this first part of this can be a mead. So um, I'll talk to you after the primary fermentation. And we're back. It has only been seven days since this thing started fermenting, but we're ready to move on because this thing is already fermented out. Now I say fermented out, I don't know what the current gravity is. Um, I also have these jalapenos here and I'm trying not to touch my face. Uh, because I would prefer not to have my eyes burn right now. We're gonna take a quick gravity reading and then I believe it's time to introduce our jalapeno and our cinnamon stick. Let me take a quick gravity reading and tell you where we're at. All right, it is true. We have finished at 1.000, which means our starting gravity was 1.080, which means that since we've leveled out, we're at, I believe, if my math is correct, roughly about a 10.3-ish percent mead. I'll put it on screen, actually, what's here. Um, now, let's get a quick taste test. I haven't done anything with this thing since I started it. No degassing, nutrients, anything like that. Let's taste it and see, after the primary, what it's like. Ooh, it's surprisingly light for being 10%. 
that little um, carbonation just because of the lack of degassing is there. The watermelon flavor has actually stayed, sort of. I think I'm gonna have to add some more and I'll talk about what I'm gonna do here in a second. But this thing has a nice um, floral note throughout it. And there's a little fruity side, mainly the watermelon. Um, I'm getting a little bit of like an apple-y taste as well. I don't know if that's the combination of the watermelon and the orange blossom honey. Okay, um, I think this is a great start. It's not the most amazing mead, but this thing's six days old. So I think time will definitely help and uh, it's, a, it's a great base for what we're doing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have all my stuff sanitized. I'm gonna rack this into this container right here and then we're gonna add our other ingredients and see if we can um, make this work. I don't know, let's find out. While that's racking over, I do wanna tell you, not all fermentations take six days. This thing just blew through really everything. And that's sort of what happens with these Lavin products. Um, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So if your fermentation with your mead is taking two weeks, three weeks plus, that's okay. Don't stress, I promise you it'll be fine. So let me finish racking this and then we'll continue on. As you can see here, I finished racking it over. Now, um, you notice in here, there's a little bit of sediment, which is stuff we don't wanna get in the mead, but there's also uh, maybe a half an inch of mead at the bottom. If you make your mead uh, bigger than what you want it to be, meaning if you want a one gallon mead, if you start it at a 1.2 gallon mead, you'll end up with probably a one gallon mead. So that's what I've started here. This stuff is not, I mean, it's gonna go in the, in the, uh, in the sink, unfortunately. So that's okay though. So let's go on to the next step. Oh, this is what I'm nervous about. I don't know if this is gonna work. I have lots of questions if it's gonna work, but we're gonna find out together. First of all, let's talk about the jalapeno side. Um, I have uh, two jalapenos that I've halved here. In my experience with jalapenos, I used one one time, deseeded it and put it in. Over time, the heat side dissipated and I was left with like a vegetable, the more vegetable side of a jalapeno and it kind of tasted gross. I don't want that to happen. And so I did a little research, had some people tell me some stuff. And what I found out from other people is that if you let the seeds have or stay in whenever you are actually putting the pepper in, it will retain the heat a little bit. The, the cautionary thing I want to give you is that whenever you put a pepper into the mead, you need to be conscious or constantly watching it to make sure it doesn't impart too much flavor. I'm going to put this half of this jalapeno in. You can see here, it's still got seeds for uh, you know the time being, and I'm going to leave it just like that. It was frozen. It's thawed out now. I don't know if that'll affect the flavor, but I think a half a jalapeno, uh, you know, watching it like a hawk will be enough right now. So let's start with that. And let's go with a uh, one singular larger cinnamon stick. These two things we are gonna treat kind of like um, a dry hopping situation, which means that when you dry hop something, you put it in for X amount of time and then you're tasting it and you pull it off. Basically what we're gonna do is the same thing here. Uh, the good news is the I whenever I pull this stuff off, if the jalapeno flavor is strong enough, I can go ahead and rack this off of the jalapeno and then put the cinnamon stick back in, let that go for longer or vice versa. But the big thing is I don't want either one to impart too much. I want this to be a very balanced mead. Uh, so I'll leave that to you know, age like this. I'll be taste testing it pretty much every day to see where we're at with this. Let's talk about after the jalapeno and cinnamon are done. My idea is let those flavors impart and then I am going to pasteurize the mead, which means I'm gonna heat it up to 150 degrees for about 20 minutes, which will kill off any yeast, make them not viable anymore, basically just a still mead. Then I'm going to back sweeten with a little bit of my watermelon flavor because this stuff right here didn't necessarily um, have enough watermelony flavor and we might need even more after these things and possibly back sweeten. So this will be a still mead, I'll pasteurize. You have another option of, instead of pasteurizing uh, with a heat version, you can use potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite. I'm not against that method, but in this case, I want to uh, use this pasteurization method because I've been doing it more recently, and it, more recently and it's worked well. So yeah, we've got one cinnamon stick, one jalapeno in there. 
Let's find out if these flavors can work. Uh, again, I'm very nervous about this one. If it does, it will be a miracle, and uh, I promise you that I will not be the only person judging if this works or not. I'll give you my opinion, but I'll get somebody else's opinion as well. So, thank you uh, for tuning in so far, and here is, after this has finished, imparting all of the weird flavors that we have here. All right, just a quick little update for you guys. I put that jalapeno in and it was only in there for about 11 hours. What happened was I put it in to this mead and it was, you know, of course, imparting its flavor. I realized at about midnight, uh, which was actually last night, that I probably should check the, the mead to see if the jalapeno had imparted the flavor well enough. And guess what? It was already pretty strong. Here's a little taste of it just to kind of tell you and show you what I'm seeing. Immediately on the nose, that jalapeno is there. You get the vegetable character. There's not a lot of heat, quote, from the uh, jalapeno. But the cinnamon is actually popping out too. I'm getting both sides, jalapeno and cinnamon, more. In fact, I'm wondering, uh, this uh, cinnamon stick has been on for 20, no, 36 hours now. So it probably won't need to be on there for super long either. There might be a possibility that this mead could work, maybe with a, some more watermelon flavoring. I don't know, but that jalapeno character, I did not want to be the driving force behind everything because I know it could take over stuff really quickly. So I'm gonna let the um, cinnamon stick stay in there for a little while longer, and then we're going to pull it off when I feel like the flavor is well, you know, well imparted enough, and then we're gonna go ahead and add some more watermelon flavor and honey. It's about, 24 hours since we've pulled the jalapeno off now. And I can't believe to say I'm saying this, but the, the cinnamon stick has already imparted enough flavor. And I'll show you, this is a taste of this right here. This thing is very dry, but the cinnamon, the, the mix between the cinnamon and the jalapeno, like you get more vegetable side of the jalapeno. I think, uh, I, I'm not sure how I would fix that problem to get more of the heat of the jalapeno, because I did leave the seeds in. The cinnamon though is, just strong enough. I'm afraid that, again, like the jalapeno, if I leave it in for too long, that I'm gonna end up with a product that is too cinnamony, or more cinnamon than jalapeno. And I want this to all be mixed well. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is very dry. I do think with more watermelon and honey, it's gonna be even better. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack off of the uh, cinnamon stick because it's imparted enough flavor. I think this huge cinnamon stick I, I uh, used was powerful enough to really impart the flavor. And this also goes to show, as you're making your meads, when you put ingredients in, especially potent things like spices, peppers, make sure you're tasting them. Because if I had let this go for a week, who knows how strong that cinnamon stick would have been. All right, it's about a week from my last thing I posted. Um, I went ahead and took and pasteurized this, meaning that I put it in my oven for, uh, to set at 140 degrees for about 20 minutes. And uh, it didn't, I mean, obviously it took probably about an hour because the way things heat up, but this thing's been pasteurized, meaning that the yeast should be completely dead. They should not be able to ferment anymore, which is exactly what we want if we want to be able to back sweeten this thing without carbonation. So I'm gonna get a small sample of it right here. Okay, let's get a little taste test again. Ooh, the cinnamon's starting to pop more. The pepper's there too. It definitely needs more watermelon flavoring though. It is very light in that regard. So here's what I want to do. I'm first gonna start by back sweetening, quote, with the watermelon flavoring. And I'm gonna be a little bit scientific, but I'm also gonna mainly do this to taste. Okay, I'm gonna add some more watermelon flavoring, but I'm gonna do it to taste. So let me do that real fast. Okay, I think this is at a good point. I've put 0.35 ounces of the watermelon flavoring in here, just enough to give it a little bit of hint of that. And the reason I'm not putting more in is because we want the jalapeno and the cinnamon to pop out as well. Uh, otherwise, it would just be a more watermelon mead. Uh, I think that's at a good point. However, one thing I do feel it needs is a little, just a tiny bit more sweetness. So I'm gonna add some regular honey now. Okay, this thing's pretty good. The pepper isn't necessarily hot. You do get more of the vegetable side of the pepper. I wish there was more heat from it. The cinnamon really pops quite a bit. 
Um, and the watermelon now has a better rounded out flavor. The honey definitely just makes this more feel like a mead, and less like a weird wine, <laughs> which I think it can feel like. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take and put my airlock back onto this thing, just to make sure there's no re-fermentation, there shouldn't be. I'm gonna let it set for another couple days at least, and then I will uh, bottle it, and we will kind of determine whether or not this can be a mead, and I'm gonna invite a friend to come help me decide if this can be a mead. And we're back. This is the finale of our second Can It Be a Mead. I'm here with BC from Doing the Most. He Hello, is YouTube. He's a fellow uh, YouTuber, and he puts out a lot of um, brewing content and various other content in general. So go check him out. I'll put him in the description. But he's here to help me decide if this can be a mead. So I have here, I'll show the, the label on the screen. This is the Mild and Wild Mead. That's what I decided to name it. And the label itself is pretty wild because this thing is a um, quite a trip. So it's a jalapeno, or watermelon, jalapeno, cinnamon. They're all pretty even, I would say. I tried to make them even tasting, but we'll see if that's true. June 2020, too. Yeah, it's so. fresh, fresh. <laughs> so hopefully there's no carbonation. Okay, thankfully there shouldn't have been any because we pasteurized this thing. So tell me about the process. What did you do to make this? So I started this mead off. I made a traditional mead and put um, my watermelon flavoring from Amaretti in the primary. Okay. And then let that go all the way through the primary. And when that finished fermenting, I put a half of a jalapeno that was not deseeded. Okay. And a cinnamon stick in. Um, and then I also ended up putting more watermelon flavoring later. But the jalapeno was in for 11 hours, I think. Okay. Because it really imparted the flavor pretty <laughs> quickly. And then the cinnamon stick was in for like 24, 36 hours. Okay, so how, so, did, how, did, you, how did you remove the jalapeno? Um, I sanitized like a weird spoon thing and just <laughs> dug around until I could get it out. Right on. Okay. So I didn't want to rack it off of the cinnamon stick. It was the whole. Okay. So it's production. Yeah. And then I added, um, I, I pasteurized it, added some honey to back sweeten a little bit and added the watermelon flavoring to try and bolster that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is this dry? It, it should be dry to semi-sweet. I didn't put a lot of honey in. You should get some from the, some sweetness from the watermelon flavoring. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like a lot of the, that standard is like up to you as a person. Like, what do you feel like is dry? Because some people are like, this is sweet. No, that's fair. That's so. fair. It's a little, it's a little boozy on the nose. Mm -hmm. But like, not in a bad way. And kind of like, it's like a, it's got like a brandy kind of note to it. Yeah. It's pretty clear. I, I'm surprised how clear it is for... It is clear. It's got nice legs on it too. Really kind of clings to the side of the glass. I think that nice pasteurizing way. does help a little bit with clarity. Okay. Um, I think that might have helped some. At least the stuff I have pasteurized has been more clear. Interesting. All right. Yeah, this is, this is a lot. It's very, um, huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are some competing flavors in there, mm -hmm. for sure. It, it, I will say that it does not taste anything like what I thought it was going to taste like. Yeah. I tried to, like I said, I tried to make everything mm. a little more even. I didn't necessarily want flavor one flavor to be the prominent and so i tried okay. to make them the same but obviously it's hard when so you made. added extra watermelon extract to it because it was the, second... the watermelon was gone after okay the primary okay the, it had fermented pretty much completely out interesting it's very um like the i think there's honey character but it tastes like a like a juice to me i think that the mm. honey character is not as bolstered as i might have as i kind of want there's not a lot of heat to it, not mm -hmm. in the way that I would expect. It and is. I don't get any of the vegetal that I, I would expect either. But there's like a, just like a light sizzle that kind of just hangs out mm -hmm. a little bit. I think that combination of cinnamon and jalapeno was what worried me most. Because yeah. I always was able to see, <laughs> like I could see jalapeno and watermelon, like yeah. kind of working, or jalapeno and cinnamon stick. But then like the combination of those. Um, 
Yeah. It's... <laughs> no, I'm to... really, I'm really trying to experience it. Yeah, here. Um... it's a lot. It is a lot to handle. Um, the one thing I do like about this is that I, I will never say that I'm like the one to do this the best. I think somebody out there could do this way better than me. And so, uh, in, in fact, I encourage you if you want to try to make this, go for it. Like, see what you can do with it. Um, but I like the heat level on this. Um... <laughs> There's just, there's something in there that I'm trying to suss out what it is. And it's almost like a, almost like a toffee or mm. caramel kind of note in there. There's something kind of roasty happening in there, um, which maybe comes from the cinnamon. I, I can wonder. see maybe the cinnamon bark kind of lending that kind of woody, roasty kind of flavor. Yeah, I used uh, orange blossom honey. I should have also okay. said that. So there are probably some fruity notes from that. But I could definitely see that. I didn't use any oak. I didn't use anything that would add that flavor. It's not really tannic, too. It's very... No, no, there's not a lot of astringency. Um, the body's a little thin on it in kind of like a Riesling kind of mm -hmm. way, which I don't dislike given that once you swallow that, that jalapeno burn kind of takes over and yeah. so it's it's kind of like refreshing going down and then it reminds you of what it is <laughs> <laughs> when you're done yeah um that's interesting well i like the sweetness level on it too i, I wouldn't want this any sweeter yeah no, i don't i that's the thing is as i was adding more i tried to taste test after i add a little bit and not just go for it because you can't take things out obviously yeah, yeah. um i think that I think this is a good launching point. Mm -hmm. I do, in my opinion, in this course, this is you can have your own desire and whatever opinion. We could be, we could disagree if you want to. <laughs> um, but I, I think this could be. I can think this can work. I do believe that uh, the watermelon flavor isn't as prominent as yeah. I would like, and I think there's certain fruity characteristics that might have supported the the jalapeno and cinnamon flavor a little bit more. Um, yeah, I do want more watermelon in this. Yeah. When, when I think thing. watermelon, I think of like a like a candy or something that's just like straight up right, Sour right. Patch Kid or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, I I did not think I was gonna say I wanted more watermelon out of this. Yeah. Uh, when you when you mentioned what was in here, but <clears throat> paired with that burn, you've got that that light kind of delicate, almost like I said, like a white wine sensation mm -hmm. going down. Having a little fruit to bolster that before the burn kicks in could be really nice. Um, I I mean I think this meads. You think it can be a mead? <laughs> I, I mean, I think that again, um, there will come a day whenever I make one of these that is absolute garbage. And like I don't think this one is absolute garbage. I think it can be no. We need better. Um, I this one was I was a little worried about though because it. It's a lot of weird flavors. You know? It's there's a there's a lot going on, and and I I think that as it's opened up, um, mm -hmm. I also say it's as married itself a little bit. Whenever that I was first drinking drink. it, yeah. Whenever I was <laughs> drinking it and trying to get a little oxygen in with it, I think it did open up some of those yeah. those flavors, especially yeah. the heat from that jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, the jalapeno is coming through more, and that just like this is gonna sound like a negative, but that kind of grittiness that uh -huh. you get with cinnamon flavor. Yeah. Which I think is a good thing because it adds complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, adds that, what little tannins are there. <laughs> right. That first sip was a little um, jarring. Yeah, but for sure. No, I, I think as this opens up, you might decant it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it meets. Cool. Well, I'm into it. Uh, you know, I think we both agree that this can be a mead. And I, again, I want to say this. If you want to make this yourself, go try it. I think that... Um, while this is a weird combination of flavors, you might really like it. You might, and probably can make this even better uh, than I can. And I'm not a master brewer person at all, so I encourage you to try it. So, thank you, you know, for helping me decide. Given given the, the variables you were faced with, I, I think you pulled it off pretty well. I, I've tried to do what I can. <laughs> so, I'll have uh, more of these in the future. In fact, I'm already working on an episode three. If you are watching this right now, it might even be uh, coming out soon. But there are going to be more of these with wild flavors, and that wheel will decide my fate ultimately. So thanks again. Go check, out, go check out Doing the Most um, if you want to find some more brewing content. And you guys also do culinary stuff, right? Yeah, and a little homesteading. We're going to yeah. get more into that. Actually. So 
but uh, go check them out. Link in the description. And yeah, I hope you guys will tune in for other videos. Go check out his and I'll see you guys next time. So with that, Thanks. cheers. Cheers.